Hey everybody, hope and pray that you're doing well today as we come to our word from the word. And today, uh, that word is God. God. Uh, now we are talking about uh, the Holy Spirit, continuing in that. Uh, and again, I'll put up the link for our video about the questions. Uh, but question number one, I'll put that up again, is, is the Holy Spirit a person or a force? And uh, you can look back and see where we've been going. Um, this is the third um, kind of scripture that we're looking at to see if we can find an answer to that question throughout scripture. And uh, so the first we saw in John 14, 26, that the Holy Spirit is a teacher. Uh, we see that he in uh, John 15, 26, that he's a testifier. He's a witness. And today we're going to be in Romans chapter eight, Romans chapter eight. I'm going to read verses 12 through 17, uh, but really going to jump out there on verse 14 and look at that. But uh, I just love this passage so much. I want us to read it all together. So let's just dive right in as we see that the Holy Spirit is a guide. So Romans eight, chapter um, chapter eight, verse 12 uh, rather, uh, it says, therefore, brethren, we are debtors, not to the flesh, to live according to the flesh. For if you live according to the flesh, you will die. But if by the spirit, you will put to death the deeds of the body and you will live. And here's, here's the main point you can underline here for the context of our conversation today. For as many as uh, are led by the spirit of God, these are sons of God. For you did not receive the spirit of bondage again to fear, but you received the spirit of adoption by whom we cry out, Abba, Father. The spirit himself bears witness with our spirit that we are children of God. And if children, then heirs, heirs of God and joint heirs with Christ. Man, I love that statement, joint heirs with Christ. If indeed we suffer with him, that we may also be glorified together. So as we're talking about today, if you saw there in verse 14, that uh, for as many are as led by the spirit, these are sons of God. And, and to think about it, that we are uh, children of God when we are led by the Holy Spirit. So as a, a leader, but more essentially um, this word guide for us today. Uh, kind of the idea of, you know, I've shared this story before and I was just even laughing, even thinking about it. I remember a time that Christy and I were on the way uh, to the beach and um, we were just talking. It was just the two of us and, you know, rare that just the two of us were able to get away. And and so we're heading on down the road and hadn't been to the beach in a while. And uh, well, next thing you know, I missed a turn and I knew it as I was going down the the interstate and I looked and I said, well, I was supposed to take that exit, you know, as I was going by and well, we had a GPS then before we had all nice fancy phones like we have now, but um, it had a GPS and of course, you know what it started saying, recalculating. Well, we ended up, we were on a new part of the road that was not on the GPS. And so it kept saying recalculating, recalculating, and it kept telling me to turn around and, and go this way and go that way. And the whole time there was no picture of where I was because it didn't recognize the road I was on. And, and we laughed even as we were talking about it there that uh, Christy leaned over and told me, she said, because it kept saying recalculating, recalculating. And she finally said that, it, you know, hey, one of these times the GPS is just going to say, fine, I give up. You go your own way. <laughs> but as we joke about thinking about that, I'm so glad that God doesn't do that to us. That God doesn't just throw up his hands and say, fine, just do whatever you want to do. No, God gives us the Holy Spirit to continue to guide us, to continue to lead the way. And maybe today, maybe you feel like you're just way off the beaten path. And maybe you feel like that the spirit has been telling you, hey, we need to recalculate. We need to move back around. And maybe you haven't been listening. Maybe that's the reason that you got uh, to the location that you're at now, spiritually speaking. Um, but let's think about this. So to be led by the spirit, how else can we be led unless we have a guide? Now, with that, uh, this verb here for the word led really means to be uh, willingly led. So in other words, it's still our choice. 
it's still our choice whether or not we decide to listen. I mean, that even as I was listening to that GPS, I still had the choice whether or not to go where it was telling me to go. And the, the Holy Spirit guides us in the same way. He, he's telling us where to go and telling us what to do and how we should act. And, and he's leading and guiding us. Well, how exactly does he do that? Well, let's talk about the first two things we already mentioned, right? Uh, in past videos, right? That he teaches us uh, and he testifies. And he testifies about Jesus and about the word and he teaches us about the word. And, and so he's, he's teaching and testifying the things which God the Father and, and God the Son have already put forth. The things that they've already said, the things that they've already done and the things that they are going to do and, and promise to fulfill. And as we talked about Wednesday, that he started that good work and he's going to finish it. So all these things, the Holy Spirit teaches us and testifies uh, to the fact of all that God has done and is doing and will continue to do in and through us and all around us. But but see, the, the point is here that we still have to be willing to be led by the Holy Spirit that is trying to teach us, right? We have to be teachable. Uh, we talked about the first day. We we also have to listen to the testimony of of the Holy Spirit. We have to know our scripture. We have to listen to the word. We have to listen to what God is telling us. Listen to that that testimony from that great witness uh, in the Holy Spirit. Now, in verse 13, we see uh, that, you know, he says uh, that if you uh, live according to the flesh, you will die. He's not talking, we don't have time to really dive in, but he's not talking about eternal death there. He's talking about because the end of chapter 80 he's saying what can separate us from the love of God. So he, he's talking about here that maybe even a uh, premature uh, physical death as we see elsewhere in scripture. Uh, but what he's saying is that also that, I mean, that kills relationships. It kills uh, things that God is uh, trying to do and accomplish here on earth when we live according to the flesh. In other words, when we do our own thing. See, because even at the moment of salvation, our flesh is still here, right? We still, it is a daily, daily struggle against the flesh. That's why we have to take up our cross daily, deny ourselves and follow him, right? If the flesh was automatically gone, then, then our self would be out of the way and we could just follow God. But see, the truth is, is that that flesh, that battle is always there. So how in the world do we beat it? How in the world do we, uh, do we kill the flesh, crucify the flesh, as Paul says, each and every day? How do we do that? Well, we do it through the power of the Holy Spirit. See, as the Holy Spirit guides us, see, because the rest of verse 13 said that, but uh, if by the Spirit, uh, but if, if you're, what he's saying, if you're led by the Spirit, um, then you will, oh, you will put to death the deeds of the body, excuse me. And then you will live. You will put to death the deeds of the body. So the things that you want to do uh, in your flesh, your sin nature wants to do, if you're led by the spirit, that's the first thing he's going to kill. He's going to kill those, those uh, desires and those deeds of, that your flesh wants to do. And then you can live an abundant life, right? Jesus said that he has come so that we can have life and have it more abundantly. So, man, we can live like we're supposed to live, live for the citizenship that we have in heaven. But this only happens when we live by the spirit, when we are led by the spirit. So we see that the that the Holy Spirit not only illuminates scripture for us to be able to see it better and to understand it better and and to testify about it so that we understand it better. But he also enables us as a guide. He enables us to obey the word of God. Because what good is it if we know the word of God, but have no strength or no power to obey it? And see, that's where the power of the Holy Spirit comes in. That as a guide, he is guiding us to the proper uh, way to obey God's word. But there again, here's the point for today, is that therein still lies the problem, that we still have the choice whether or not we yield to the Holy Spirit. We still have the choice whether or not we desire or, or that we will obey. We may even have the desire to obey. As Paul says, you know, the things that I wish I wasn't doing, I end up doing. And the things that I wish I wasn't doing, that's the exact things I end up doing. See, he, he was battling the same battle that we do. 
Yes, his temptation may have been different, but, uh, you know, your temptation is different from what mine may be. But at the end of the day, we all face temptation. And really, if you just get down to the nuts and bolts of it, that temptation is to walk by the flesh and not according to the spirit. So as God is our God, as God, the Holy Spirit is our God, as he teaches us the scripture and as he illuminates it as, and enables us to walk according to the scripture. Here's the great thing that we just read in Romans chapter eight, that when we live according to the spirit, it's proof that we're sons and daughters of God, that we are children of the king. See, that's where, uh, and that's a whole sermon in itself right there, that if we are living according to the Spirit, then that is proof of our salvation. It's proof of God's indwelling in us, the Holy Spirit's indwelling in our lives. So here's the question I'm going to leave you with today. So if God, the Holy Spirit, is our guide, everything we've talked about, if he's our, uh, if he's our guide uh, to not only show us the scripture, but also show us the way to obey it, I'm just simply going to ask you this. Is he your guide today? Will you let him be your guide today? See, he's there. He's ready and willing and waiting for you to say, God, lead. So today, will you allow God, the Holy Spirit, to be your God. I pray that you will. And I pray that you have a great, great day.